everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to discuss my February plans when it comes to reading. I have so many good things out from the library right now and so many things that are on hold and coming in that I'm really excited to get a lot of reading done this February. I am currently reading two books and the first one is The Great Pretender. Sorry for the glare. You can see the camera. <laughs> and this is the new book by Susanna Callahan. It's supposed to look at this one study that happened in 1973 where this professor and a bunch of his students committed themselves to this mental hospital using fake names to see what would happen. And they were kind of branded as insane by the people at this hospital. So it's kind of looking into how they got themselves out and how they were treated while they were there. It's kind of all over the place and a little slow at the moment. I'm maybe like 25% of the way in. And it seems like the story is not that big and there's a lot of like filler in between. The other book that I'm currently reading and I started last night is From the Desk of Zoe Washington. This is by Janae Marks. Um, this is a book about a young baker who wants to be part of this kid's baking show, kind of like the Great British Bake Off. What complicates the situation is that she is currently starting communication with her imprisoned father. So her father is in prison and he's been there because of a murder charge and she just got a letter from him and she's decided to write him back. Her mother and her stepfather don't know this and probably would not approve of it, so she's kind of doing it quietly and as a secret. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only like 50 pages in, but I'm really excited for this one. And I will also talk about some of the audiobooks that are going to be coming in for me. I'm two weeks out from four different audiobooks, which is going to be really exciting when they finally arrive. So I currently have This Is Going To Hurt checked out, um, and this is a look at a medical resident and the issues of basically medical students, kind of the, the issues that they deal with, and it's due in maybe 13 days, 12 days. So I have to get to that one soon. And then I also have a few of these that are coming in soon. So one of them, oh, I do have it here. I do have a physical copy and I'm waiting for it on hold for the audiobook. And that is How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. So I'm waiting for the audiobook, only two weeks out for the audiobook to come in. I think I'll like it more as an audiobook. I kind of peeked at the text and I feel like if it's available as an audiobook, I'm just going to wait. So that's one of them. And this has been on a lot of best of... 2019 list so i'm excited to get to it it is a memoir about a black young gay man from the south um it's his coming of age um another audiobook that i'm waiting for is jonathan van ness's over the top it's almost in two weeks i've only been waiting for 10 million years i used to be number 27 in line uh, so i've been waiting for quite a long time and then the other one that is coming in that I'm super excited about is Such a Fun Age. I've heard really good things about this. It's about a black nanny who's taking care of a um, white child and kind of gets discussed like, why are you taking care of this child? And then it goes from there. It's kind of her own coming of age. Um, and it's a fiction adult book, which I'm trying to read more adult fiction this year. And then last but not least, the other audiobook that I'm waiting for is Ordinary Girls. It should also be coming in in two weeks. And that is a memoir about a woman who grew up in Puerto Rico and Miami. It says she is caught between two extremes as her family is split apart and her mother battles schizophrenia, sexual assault. So it seems like a very, very heavy one. But I saw Roxanne at the Novel, the novel Sanctuary talk about this on her Instagram and I think she liked it. So I'm really excited for it to come in. I'm excited that it's an audiobook as well. Let's go through the other books that I have currently checked out from the library. So I've been trying to, for the past few years, get into Cozy Mysteries because it's such a beloved thing. Uh, both of like my coworkers really like them and like I feel like a lot of booktubers that I watch really like cozies and I just want to be a part of the community but I just have not found a cozy mystery that I liked and I, I did not like judge everything that the characters did. Sometimes I think they're way too easy and uncomplicated which is kind of like the point of a cozy but I, I want a flawed character and I want kind of like a plot that makes me think a little bit more than than what cozies I've read so far have done. So I thought why don't I read a middle grade cozy I feel like I will have a little bit more compassion and a little bit less judgment for middle grade characters who are in a cozy mystery sort of world. So this is Murder is Bad Manners. Um, this is the first book in this Wells and Wong mystery and it takes place in England and I believe in the 1900s and they're just solving 
murders. This is the first murder that happens in their little boarding school that they're in. Um, and so they're trying to figure out what happened. So it seems lighthearted, cute, and I'm in the mood for a mystery. So I'm hoping that this is kind of the cozy world that will work for me. Maybe a middle grade cozy is what I need. I don't have these in like any sort of order. <laughs> I think most of the rest of them are not kids books. Let's see. So one that I've already started and I'm maybe 10 pages into it is Thick. Um, this is by Tressie McMillan Cotton. Um, co Cotton? Is it with an M? It is with an M. Cotton. I'm really excited to read this one. It's supposed to be like a very approachable academic look at being black, having a bigger body, and I really am excited for this one. I've heard really good things, especially from Heidi and My Reading Life. Um, it was one of her favorite books last year, so I'm trying to get to this one as well. I wish that it was available in audiobook. It's not. All right, let's talk more nonfiction. So I also have out, and I'll see if I get to this one again. I wish I was available. It was available in audiobook. I might do some more searching for it, but it's American Manifesto. This is by Bob Garfield. Bob Garfield does the podcast on the media. They kind of take a more meta look at media news and politics news, looking at it through the perspective of journalists. Um, and what that means for our culture. It says he is examining the confluence of the American preoccupation with identity and the catastrophic disintegration of the mass media. Ugh, it sounds heavy. The person who do he does a podcast with also came out with a book that was similar to that, but it was closer to the 2016 election, and I really like that one as well. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't remember what it's called, but I do remember that it was it was a fascinating little short book that took a look at like politics news, but from the length, lens of like how media is affecting and making it a problem as well. So I'm hoping that this is the same case, but just from the perspective of the other podcast host. So there it is, American Manifesto. I also have Peggy Ornstein's new book, Boys and Sex. I previously read her book, Girls and Sex, when it came out maybe two or three years ago, and I didn't love it. I think I gave it like three stars, but I am so interested in this topic, and I feel like this topic doesn't get as much written about it, um, like in big, full, full text you know, nonfiction works. So I will try anything that kind of looks at young people and how they view their identity when it comes to sexuality. So this one's supposed to look at teen boys and young boys looking at hookups, love, porn, consent, and the new masculinity. I think she learned a lot from Girls and Sex and kind of the criticisms that people had about it. So I think she did a wider array of boys in this one as a result of that. And we'll see if that makes it a better book for me. I just thought that the girls in sex one had not as many perspectives as it needed to have to like show the wide array of opinions on that topic from young girls. We'll see what boys in sex is like. Hopefully it's good. I still have two books out that I had like last December, so I'm not going to talk about them. If I actually end up reading them, then I will talk about them. <laughs> Um, so don't worry about those two. Now let's talk about graphic novels. I have a lot of comics out from the library, which is really exciting. I've been really into Fence, the comic book series um, by C.S. Picat, and Volume 3 just came in, so that's definitely one thing that I will be getting to. And I also heard the news that it's going to be like its own like graphic novel series instead of just being issues from comics, which is super, super exciting. If you haven't read Fence, I devoured volume one and two and I'm ready to devour volume three. All right, the other graphic novels that I currently have out, let's do, maybe let's do kids ones first. So one that I've tried so far to get to read, but I haven't, I haven't loved, and I think it's because I don't love the illustration so far, but it is Cub and this is by Cynthia L. Copeland. This is about a student journalist kind of not fitting into her, into her school. Journalism becomes kind of like a new facet for her to explore and kind of grow as a, as a person. But so far, I just, I don't love the art. And I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't been as excited to pick it up. Like I read a few pages and I was like, eh, it's just fine. Another kid's book I'm excited about and I'm considering for my graphic novel book club that I'm starting next month, this month, February, ah, it's this February, is The Nameless City by Faith Erin Hicks. This is a fantasy book about um, power in this other kind of world. I really enjoy the art, Faith Erin Hicks art. And I'm excited to see what this one is about. It's supposed to look at power and history. So I am considering this for my graphic novel book club if it has a good message and something like a lot of discussion possibilities. So we'll see about that. The last kids graphic novel that I have is 
Diana, Princess of the Amazons, and this is by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale. So they are continuing on creating graphic novels, and now they're taking on Wonder Woman, which is pretty cool. I love the art, it is so cute. The new Wonder Woman movie is gonna come out soon, and I'm sure I'll get asked about things like this at the library. Young adult graphic novels. One is Taproot. I first saw this, oh, and the next one, I saw both of these. Um, on Witty Novels channel and I thought they looked really interesting. My library didn't own copies so I had to get them from elsewhere. This one came from Denver. And where did this one come from? It's always interesting to see like where they come from. Um, this one came from Fort Collins. So Taproot is one about two characters. One of them is a ghost um, and that's literally all I know about it. I also really enjoy the art. It's kind of modern and computer graphic looking and then the other one is space boy um this one supposedly has a lot of volume so far and again the art i am liking the look of it in this one they live in space and have to end up moving back to earth and it's what happens from all of that so it's a sci-fi drama about a high school girl who belongs in a different time a boy possessed by emptiness as deep as space an alien artifact, a mysterious murder, and a love that crosses light years. A book I've been looking forward to for a really long time and just have not read. I feel like it's kind of, some people I watch really like it, some people I watched haven't liked it as much, but I haven't read it. It's The Arab of the Future by Riyadh Satouf. I know that this one has a couple of volumes out. Um, it is heavier in the text. It kind of reminds me of Persepolis in that way, even like the style and the colors. I need to read this one. I'm hoping that I can get it done this month. One that I saw at the library and I had no idea it was even out or what it is, is called Come Again by Nate Powell. So this is the same illustrator that did the March series. It's a very dark looking graphic novel. Um, there's a lot of, I dropped the book. Uh, there's a lot of dark colors in all of this. It's set in the 1970s and says the spirit of the love generation still lingers in one intentional community high in the Ozarks. It's a haunting tale of intimacy, guilt, and collective amnesia. That sounds real dark. I also have something more lighthearted and that is um, Nathan W. Pyle's Strange Planet. These are just going to be little comics. I see them a lot on Instagram and now they have like a full version out. So I'm hoping that these are fun. I really enjoy just reading short little comics sometimes. Ross Chast has a lot of books that I feel like always are regarded well, but I haven't read any of them. And this one is called, it's a brand new one, You Can Only Yell at Me For One Thing At A Time, Rules For Couples. So it's supposed to look at different things from, from the cup, a couple's perspectives. So they're little comics, just one-off little comics, and I'm hoping that they are very relatable. It looks like a fun little collection. The last adult book that I have is Vietnam America, which has been on my TBR for a really long time. I recently saw um, Doris from Aldi Books talk about it um, as when she was reading, so it kind of re-inspired me to pick it back up. I don't think I've ever checked it out from the library, it's just been on my Goodreads TBR for the longest time. But I saw it when I was fluffing and I just grabbed it. Um, it's very heavy and very big. I'm hoping that that means it goes through a lot of issues. But again, it talks about leaving Vietnam and all the sacrifices of all of that and I'm hoping that I really really enjoy it. I think that's it. Now I've made a huge mess and I have to pick up my mess. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!